10 years or so of my life, and I've also had the opportunity to do some music internships at a place called Hal Leonard, which is one of the biggest print publishing companies in the industry. So for me, that's been a big learning factor. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a brief overview of jazz, where it came from, how it looks today, and some influential figures in the genre. But first, keep this song in mind. Play a short little bit of it. So that's La Vie en Rose by, which I butchered, uh, by Louis Armstrong. Uh, so we'll get to him in just a second. So the birthplace of, the birthplace of jazz <laughs> is New Orleans about 100 years ago. And so that came out of a European influence and an African influence in both music uh, types to match together. And that's kind of where jazz originated. It didn't get big until folks like Louis Armstrong uh, came around and made it big. So Louis Armstrong is one of the best trumpet soloist slash uh, improver people in the business, or he was anyway. So what that looks like uh, when you take a solo in jazz is you end up improving an entire section of a song. So he made his name doing that and got big and brought jazz to start to be at the forefront of culture. Uh, so other big players in jazz were Frank Sinatra, Bing Crosby, Duke Ellington, Sammy Davis Jr., uh, Count Basie, and many, many others, Dean Martin, to list another one, for example. Uh, so what these guys did is they all did many different things. Uh, some of them worked together, some of them collaborated. They copied a lot of each other's stuff, <coughs> covered it, did it differently. So you got many takes on one song. For example, the song called Swinging on a Star, originally by Bing Crosby, is much slower and more like a ballad when he does it. When Frank Sinatra does it, it's um, a lively swing jazz sort of thing that you get up and dance to. So it just gave different perspectives on different songs. Um, so we've got the Rat Pack, which is three of the most influential figures in jazz. We have Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., and Dean Martin. So these guys did a lot of work together, whether it was um, in music or actually on film. Uh, so in music, they did several albums together, collaborated with other artists. Uh, that involved uh, Christmas, specifically. They had lots of Christmas albums with uh, other artists, Bing Crosby in particular. Um, they did live shows as well, and these ended up being also comedy shows. Dean Martin started doing uh, roasts of other musicians <laughs> and celebrities. So that's actually where that came from, the whole roast of Justin Bieber or anything. That was started by the Rat Pack, um, which that's a fun fact, I suppose. Uh, so in film, uh, they did several different films, and I just listed a couple to give examples. Uh, High Society is the first one. Uh, this was, oh man, I want to say it was in the 30s that they made this film. Um, so it had an all-star cast. You had Grace Kelly. Frank Sinatra, Bing Crosby, and Louis Armstrong. Um, and so it's a love story about um, Bing Crosby trying to win his ex-wife, Grace Kelly, back. Um, and it's told through jazz, basically. They break out into spontaneous jazz numbers throughout the whole <laughs> thing. Um, another one is Robin and the Seven Hoods, uh, which was the entire Rat Pack. So you had Sammy Davis Jr., Dean Martin, Frank Sinatra, Bing Crosby, and Peter Falk, actually. And so for those of you who don't know, because I'm going to bring it up in every speech, I hope, Peter Falk is the grandfather in The Princess Bride. Um, so he's, he's everywhere. So it's a movie about uh, rival gangs trying to uh, possess the city's gambling ring, basically. Um, so this kind of started what was called the Jazz Age, the Rat Pack Day. The Jazz Age here in America uh, was when it was, it was everywhere. It was in movies, it was in TV, it was on the radio all the time. You could find it in live shows, clubs, anywhere. It was 
there's a genre that dominates every time period. Jazz was this time period from about the late 20s to early 50s is its era. And these guys were the main influencers of that. Jazz nowadays is in a sorry state for the most part, in my opinion, anyways. Uh, so what most people think of nowadays, if you say, hey, do you listen to jazz? They'll go, no, because that's elevator music. It's, it's not. <laughs> um, so uh, other than that, jazz changes just like every other genre does. So whereas country has slowly become pop country, um, jazz has changed into this jazz fusion. Who here's all seen La La Land? So you know how Sebastian has to deal with uh, jumping on with that band, and they do a bunch of stuff he doesn't like, it involves a bunch of electronics, and that's jazz fusion. So it changes all the time. There are only really two major artists left today who do it like it used to be, um, and that is Michael Buble and Harry Connick Jr. Um, um, so I wanted to play the same song again. That's it. That's the one. Well, that wasn't supposed to happen. This whole thing is a lot. Yeah. It is. It's correct. Charlie got the rights for it, too. Yeah. yeah. Um, Yes. 